Hey guys, what's up? Sompo here. Today we are going to learn how Yataro plays Draw Ranger in the lane. So if you want to learn how to lane with Draw Ranger, then this video is for you. Okay, so let's talk about his items first. Now he got 5 stats with the circular and the 3 iron node branches. Now Draw Ranger has very low base stats. So he got overall stats to buff Draw with the strength, agility as well as intelligence. And he got a magic stick because there is Magnus and Rubik in the lane. So a lot of spams with the spell. So he's going to get free stick charges. Now I must say, in all my games that I watch Yataro, he always has the magic stick and because he got the gold for the magic wand, he bought the magic wand. Now Yataro takes the first point in Frost Arrow, which allows him to hit the Magnus in the lane without drawing aggro of the crypt. You can see how Yataro is attacking the crypt again and again to last it. Now this is just to balance the creep out. You can see, now he does this so he doesn't miss CS while he's trying to harass the Magnus. So when there's nothing to last it, he hits the Magnus so he can harass him. You can see how Yataro is staying away from the range clip because Rubik has Fade Bolt and he can do some damage so he doesn't want to take the extra damage from Rubik. Now Yataro goes to aggro pull here because he wants to keep the crypt next to his tower instead of in the middle. Now he aggro pulls here again because he doesn't want Rubik or Magnus to deny the crypt. So Yataro is attacking the crypt to keep the crypt balanced but Rubik is not letting him to do that. He is trying to harass him because the tusk is not there. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to reach 1000 subs. It will be a great help. Now a lot of scripts are coming under the tower of Yataro. You can see how he's positioning behind the tower. So Magnus and Rubik can't play that aggressive on him. Now Tusk hits level 2 here. So and Rubik is very close. So Tusk goes on him. And Magnus had the skiver at level 1. So he saves his buddy Rubik with the skiver. Now Yataro gets his level 2, so he gets the point in the multi-shot and because Rubik and Magnus are so close, he uses the multi-shot to get some harassment, which allows him to farm the crypts without any contest. Now the neutral camp spawn time is approaching, so Rubik wants to block the small camp, when he's half HP though. And he messes the telekinesis, so that means Rubik has no stance, so this allows Yataro and Tash to fight Rubik back without worrying about getting lifted to the cliff. And as usual, carry players are very selfish, so he leaves the task died to the Magnus and he goes to farm the crypts. Now this time Yataro bought the Wraith Band and he drops it to the task so he can bring it from the base. So I think the reason why he bought the Wraith Band in this lane is to get him that extra attack speed and the armor. And his Korea got the Band of Elvin skin which gives him 6 attack speed, 6 armor, 6 agility. Now he got one more point in the Frost Arrow because it increases the damage of the Frost Arrow as well as the slow. And he was fighting the Magnus because Magnus is alone in the lane without the ruby. Now Magnus did an aggro pull there to pull the crypt next to his tower. So Yatara goes to hit that flag barrier crypt so it stays with him. Now the 3 minutes mark is approaching so Lotus is gonna spawn. And Rubik decides to not contest here because the lane is too far for him and thus secures the Lotus. Now Magnus is trying to aggro pull the crypt and Yatara punishes it. And because Rubik used the lift, Rubik has no defensive items and Rubik is out of position so Yataro targets the Rubik and tries to kill him. So these two creeps act as a body for Yataro and they even glimmed the wave just so that they can hit it more but Magnus tries to zone out Yataro. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to reach 1000 subs, it will be a great help. And because they are half HP, Yataro is playing aggressive to zone out the Magnus from hitting the creeps. You can see how Yataro backs up when he sees the Magnus very close to him. He's calculating the potential lift into Skiver back to the tower. And because Tusk gets Skiver into the tower, Yataro gets a free hit here. So he starts to pour the hits and get the kill on the Rubik and eventually the Magnus. Now he's able to do this because Tusk is playing very well. He's tanking all the spells for the throw. So this means Yataro is gonna get a free game. So with those two kills, Yataro finishes power threats. And he drops it at the base so Tusk can collect and bring it to the lane. You can see how Yataro is attacking the creeps to keep the creep balanced and he aggro pulls the creeps to deny the range speed before Magnus spawns. And also to keep the lane next to his side. You can see how Yataro positions himself to avoid the shock wave while he's trying to secure the creeps. With those two creeps, he keeps it next to his tower instead of taking him into tower. So this way he can keep the lane towards his side more. So there Rubik did manage to pull the hard cam into the lane which forces the wave to be next to the tower 
Now Yathoru did go one more point into the multi shot and not opting for the silence. So this is a bit greedy and this can get you killed. He's trying to get some harassment into the Magnus because Magnus is trying to tank the crit. But he is being careful about not getting too close otherwise Rubik will lift him and get the skiver back under the tower. Now Yathoru uses the multi shot to secure the toll creep and they go on Rubik because Rubik is a bit too far which baits Yataro into getting a skewer under the tower. But before that Yataro got the rain top and he kept his power threats on strength which allowed him to survive under the tower. He kept his power threats agility to use the magic one and then switches to strength to get more HP and which allows him to fight back even more. So that rain drop on time saved Yataro's life twice now. So Yataro was buying the items, he was buying the Basilus and the Salve. That's why he gets caught from the Shadow Shaman who's coming from behind. Now after that death, Yatharo tips back into the lane, but the mid lash caught a face run, so he rotates towards the bot lane and there was no mid ward. So Yatharo gets caught farming very far away from his tower and the lash like runs him down and kills him. So while he was dead, he missed two waves there and now because there are a lot of creeps, he uses a multi shot to clear the wave. So there are no creeps for enemies to tank and so this way they can't dive under the tower. Now he has an observe ward at twin gate so they can scout the rotations coming from the top lane. This allows him to farm the medium camp standing right next to the tower without actually going near the outpost. Now from here onwards Yataro just jungles in the back line because he doesn't want to show his hero in the lane otherwise the enemy will gank him. Because they got a shadow shaman, rubik, magnus, flesh they would love to kill the hero. He doesn't show in the lane until his task comes to the lane. Now from here onwards, he just comes to the lane to clear the wave and goes back to the jungle and he repeats this again and again. So I think that's it for this video guys. So thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next video. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye. Radiant structures are fortified. Double damage.